Sons of Freedom, I am Dr. Tony Huge, and we are here to crush ignorance and pioneer human evolution. All good. So if you didn't know, I've been putting on my Sherlock Holmes hat and have been doing a ton of research on people within the fitness industry. And very exclusively, I've talked a lot about Tony Huge, Connor Murphy, and the whole gang there. There was allegedly a murder case, allegedly a cover up. But I think we all know that when someone usually makes a bad decision, it's not just one bad decision. I think very rarely in life that is the case, of course, everyone deserves second chances. But usually you'll find that if the severity of that bad decision is quite large, they're likely to make further bad decisions. It's usually not a one and done kind of thing. Now, just to be clear, I'm not gonna call anyone a serial killer, specifically not Tony Huge, but there is many more dark secrets to uncover with the whole scenario. So without any further ado, let's address the elephant in the room. Tony Huge calls himself a doctor even though he's actually a lawyer. You're a doctor, right? And I did a quick Google. So you were, you're not a medical doctor. You're right. a law doctor. Doctor of law. Yeah. Which doctor I mean, I, law. I don't need to call myself doctor, but the problem is, you know, I'm in the area of chemical biohacking and people come to me when their doctor can't solve their problem. So I'm like a doctor doctor. There's a little bit of a misleading sense to that. While being a lawyer and having a degree in law can technically or maybe apply as a doctoric, I don't think it is one of the things that applies here. Within the field of law, pretty much universally, no one accepts that title as legitimate. Reason being is that obviously that title is generally applied to PhD holders or actual practitioners within the medical field. And so you said you got a doctorate of laws? Do you mean a JD? Yeah. So what makes you think a JD is, is a doctorate of laws? It's a doctor degree. It, it's a juris doctorate, but it's not It's not a doctor degree. Like it doesn't, you don't, you don't really think it makes you, allows you to call yourself a doctor, do you? Yes. So you think I can call myself a doctor, he can call himself a doctor, we're all doctors? So according to you, every lawyer is can say DR in front of their name? Just like every chiropractor, every dentist, okay, every medical um, doctor, every doctor at so a why don't they? degree. Um, <laughs> I don't know. No some, idea. Some, you, some you're do. the only person to figure this out. Some chiropractors demand me. I'm not talking department. about chiropractors. I'm yeah, I'm talking about lawyers. Do you know of any other lawyer who calls himself a doctor? I don't remember. I haven't been in the lawyer circle for a while. Did you ever refer to yourself as a doctor when you were a lawyer? No, my friends did. Which friends? I don't remember. So in 2007, you had friends that referred to you as doctor? Right. Doctor what? Just doctor. Um, just because? Like a nickname, or was it? did it have anything to do with your practice of law? It had to do with getting my doctor of jurisprudence. Oh, so they would say, hey, doctor, you're a doctor now, pat on the back, that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah. And you didn't stop them? No. Because you believed in your heart of hearts that lawyers are allowed to call themselves doctors. Is that what you're saying? It's just friends calling each other's names. Uh, but you adopted it, is what I'm saying. Yes. So you didn't stop them. Right. Right. Is, are, so is there any type of research you did to determine whether or not lawyers can call themselves doctors. In, in what forum? I mean, we, you can call yourself whatever you want. Not really. I can't, I can't put up a shingle saying I'm a doctor and give people medicine. Is that what you, of course not. No, and doctors I never are a very special thing, right? Doctors are allowed to prescribe medicine. You can't just go around calling yourself a doctor, right? It's a pretty self-inflicted problem, Tony. To me, you just falsely admitted that you're using a professional title to advertise yourself as something you're not. I mean, you're sure acting like a doctor by claiming that certain SARMs cure diseases and all, but I think everyone knows you're not in the medical practice. And a lot of these compounds are actually cures for diseases. I mean, I use SARMs to cure people for diseases, not just bodybuilding purposes and, and for longevity. And the only reason that this guy's able to get away with what he does is because he's a lawyer. He operates in the gray area. Unfortunately, despite being a very close colleague with Leo and Longevity, who actually has a really good reputation, or I should say had, of biohacking. There was legitimate, accurate claims and research being done about the things he was saying. However, I can't simply say the same about Tony Huge. There's so much recycled information that he uses as well as misinformation at large. For example, he goes around saying things like this. It's like the SARMs are so much better than the classic steroids, and yet people stick to the classic steroids because that, that's what they're familiar with. They're scared of the new technology. The newer technology of steroids is better and safer and more advanced, has more benefits and less side effects. They just can't connect that in their mind. Instead, everybody's afraid of new
new chemistry. And look, I get it. There's obviously going to be advancements within medications and the medical system at large, but I don't think SARMs, selective androgen receptor modulators, is something we're going to be seeing anytime soon come to fruition. And I do have a video covering some of the things that are exactly wrong with SARMs, which you can watch here. But to sum things up, from all the clinical trials we have, not a single SARM has been approved for medical use as we currently speak because of the fact that they've caused heart attacks, strokes, and produce a handful of other side effects that you'd never have to worry about if you just pinned traditional gear. So yeah, the medical industry is a little bit afraid of this quote-unquote new chemistry because, quite frankly, it's dangerous and it doesn't show to have any significant benefit beyond the things that are already in use, like testosterone, Anovar, or Primable. I get it. I mean, I don't agree with it, but I get it. Obviously, the reason that he's talking up these products so much is because he's peddling these products and trying to sell them and start a business, which arguably is terribly immoral, as we've talked about with many other people on this channel. But what's shocking to me is unlike any other company within this field who labels their products as research chemicals only, he's very directly marketing these for human use. I mean, his company name has the word athlete in it, implying that it's supposed to be used for athletes. But beyond that, he's calling these things supplements, dietary supplements, which is certainly one thing you should avoid doing from a legal aspect when you're selling peptides and SARMs. And from Tony himself, he said, It is legal to possess. It is legal to in for other people to inject themselves, but it is illegal to actually sell it to someone like you would a supplement. Obviously, Tony has gone to some lengths to avoid any kind of liability here by the packaging confirming that the company assumes no responsibility if this product is misused. But what I don't understand is specifically what is the correct use of the product then? These products are inherently dangerous and there's nothing from stopping teenagers to take them. And you could very clearly ask, why is that a problem, Colton? Well, some of these products are going to be sort of hormonal manipulators. They don't just selectively activate the androgen receptor which is what a SARM is, a selective androgen receptor modulator, they do systemically activate basically androgen receptors everywhere compared to the selectiveness that they're marketed for. And so as a result, humans who do take things like RAD140 or many other SARMs will experience some downregulation within their HPTA access or hypothalamic pituitary ovarian or testicular access. That means young children who will take these products will shut down their natural hormone production, leading to a plethora of issues later on in life, not even at puberty yet. And at some point, I really hope that Tony does catch some backlash from selling these products openly for human use, but clearly it shows that Tony doesn't care one bit. We did a video on a kid named Cody Copa a while back, and Tony is now sponsoring him, which keep in mind, this is a 14-year-old kid. I believe he's 15-year-old now, but he is on trend. He is on testosterone and a bunch of steroids. So as much as he claims that his products are good for health and longevity. I don't actually believe that's the case when you're sponsoring a 14 year old who is taking a copious amount of steroids. You are quite literally embracing steroid abuse among teenagers. And if you're familiar with Tony at all, you at least know that he's somewhat consistent with his views. There's two common things that he often says, a day natural is a day wasted. And the other thing is for every biological problem, there is a chemical solution. Now, obviously he has a strong view on this stuff. And I would like to believe it's because of the sake he has, well, multiple companies within the industry, but there's a lot of issues with this particular view. I mean, for one, I do use gear myself, but do I think that every human on planet Earth needs to be on some sort of pharmacology to live their best existence? Absolutely fucking not. I think that's perplexing and absolutely stupid. You are made of stupid. Stupid. But secondly, do I believe that there is a chemical solution to every biological problem? Also, absolutely not. In, in fact, most problems we can find organic sort of solutions towards that don't require taking synthetic chemicals. I mean, a, a solution is, in this case, a problem created by you that you now want to solve because you created the problem by yourself. Brad, show them how it's done. Boom. Sell me that pen. Watch. Go on. Let me show this fucking pen. That's my boy right there. This pen. Fucking uh, sell anything. Why'd you do me a favor? Why'd you name down that napkin for me? I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Shit. He's creating urgency. Oh, you're getting to want to buy the stuff. Convince them it's something that they need. You know, you know what I mean? And that's the thing. 
all nuns are lesbians. What the fuck are you yeah. talking? Now, I don't lie when I say that the healthcare industry sucks ass. It's terrible in virtually most countries you go to, unless you're in Thailand, especially as a bodybuilder. But one thing they tend to get right is often assess all of the possible paths they can take before prescribing medications. Now, you might argue that America has had a lot of scandals in the past with things like Adderall and methamphetamines, and that's definitely true. This decongestant contains methamphetamine, and this drug test will prove it. So I decided to try testing the inhaler itself. And not only did that come back positive for methamphetamine, it also came back positive for another drug, MDMA. In 2002, a British skier tested positive for amphetamines at the Olympic Games, and he was stripped of his medal. Turns out he had just used one of these inhalers, and this is what turned his test positive. The Olympic Committee's rules at the time did not distinguish between the very illegal dextromethamphetamine and the very legal levomethamphetamine, and so they did not give him his medal back. But I think most doctors, if good, and progressive are going to say, hey, let's look at our options here before placing you on a swath of different chemicals. And if you think about it, the vast majority of people are actually unhealthy. I mean, they have a suboptimal lifestyle and routine altogether. With a few tweaks to that situation, whatever it might be, diet, exercise, who knows what, they could fix basically a lot, if not all of their problems without the need for any kind of medications. I mean, just think about glucon-like one peptides. They don't even need to exist, but because people can't stop eating, they exist. So like I said, you're creating your own problems and then making the solution chemistry, but it could just be a solution that you can generate naturally. Okay, if you use the occasional peptide to fix an injury, that's a little bit of a different thing or something to enhance cognition before a big test or a long work day, which is something I regularly do, fair enough. But if you're entirely dependent on injecting something and believe that if you don't take that something, or any kind of chemistry, that you are simply lesser than, that is radicalized belief. You are no better than a pothead on the side of the street, or more accurately, a meth head, who can't find a home because he just simply can't stop taking drugs because every day not on those drugs is a day wasted to him. And that's exactly what Tony is in a way. He's dependent on all of these drugs that he surrounds himself with. And I think it gives him this feel that he has some omnipotent control over just about everything around him. I like to have sex with three women per day, every day, different ones, and then rotate. So maybe like sex with, I like to have sex with at least nine girls per week and three different ones per day. And like, dude, if he wasn't manipulating his physiology or chemistry to a certain extent, his dopamine receptors would be absolutely fucking fried right now. Holy shit. His whole way of life, his whole preaching is about freedom and living the way you want to live, but at the same time, he's micromanaging every aspect of his life, having to stick to drug routines because if he falls off, he'd be in a shitty situation. I mean, we're men, we love sex, and sure, it's important. I mean, your boobs are huge. I mean... I want to squeeze him. Oh. Mama. But there's nothing even slightly fulfilling about having sex with multiple women all of the time. I think if you've been able to do this in a fortunate area of your life, it's actually more stressful the longer you do it and almost brings into a really tough situation of depression. At a, at a certain point, you just kind of feel less human and more sex object. And also, it's not because these women who he surrounds himself with want to be around Tony. He calls them a harem, but literally, if we go to Thailand right now, I could show you the bars that they work at, which he gives them cash to bring home with him. It's not any kind of wives or any kind of relationship. He pays for their time and they come back home with him. The harem goes marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The harem goes marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. If Tony didn't pay these girls in the harem, they'd run, they'd run. If they don't increase their bank accounts by one, by one, they're not for you, they don't love you. If money wasn't involved, they wouldn't love you. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that Tony has multiple supplement companies. Some of them sell mainstream supplements like Enhanced Labs, and some of them sell more questionable products like Enhanced Athlete. But another company that you might not know Tony is involved with is Swiss Chem, which you've probably seen this brute of a human talk up on some sort of social media platform, most likely Instagram. Submit fat loss stack. 
I would say five amino one MQ. This is what I utilize for my show prep. As you guys know, here I am, a jacked, huge, freaking shredded. Now, people used to say that they were quite a reputable brand. They could get products from them and they worked very well, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. A lot of people are reporting that they haven't simply received their orders and they're claiming that the label isn't even what's in the product. With this guy going as far to state that the MK677 isn't even real because it doesn't dissolve in water, which really there's two obvious takeaways here. They're all bro scientists and they're hurting people because they're selling garbage. So in my opinion, storms are not safe and may actually be worse than steroids. These are all bro scientists and they're hurting people because they're selling garbage. Now, I'm not condoning any kind of peptide or SARM, but having these things in encapsulated formulas is a bit of a red flag for me. Now, SARMs do typically come in powders, but a lot of things you can reconstitute with bacterial static water and that lyophilized puck that the stuff is going to come in, mostly peptides, is going to then turn into a fluid very easily. But I also think that people don't realize this is a completely unregulated realm of the marketplace. There is quite literally nothing in place stopping them from fulfilling filling your orders. There's also nothing in place to stop them from selling you fake products. And it doesn't mean anything that they have test reviews on their website because quite frankly, they were done by a third party they could have paid off or these could have been a one and done kind of thing. They batched one sample and sent that and that was their positive sample. Then they said, cool, we got what we need. Let's just start selling the bunk now. And if you're tapped in like me, you've definitely seen this as a reoccurring theme with a lot of different companies on the supplement market and on the underground lab market. And unless you're testing with someone like Janoski, where they can verify your results on an independent website, this means virtually nothing. But they even state that they'll refund your product if you don't like it, if you test it yourself and it's not good. But what's a refund worth if they're not even refunding lost orders to begin with? Tony has already wound up in court multiple times over these simple companies. And like I said in the past, he'll operate in that gray zone as much as he can just to get out of this kind of stuff. He doesn't want to make himself a liability. Going as far as evading any kind of statements within court and trying to cut all ties with these companies by lying and using someone else's name to throw under the bus. And like Scott Cavill, who was sentenced to prison over the whole DNP scandal, when we've clearly got dozens of articles online acknowledging that Tony was the face of the entire company product, and yet got away with no consequences whatsoever. And there's one saying that goes... A lawyer who represents himself in court has a fool for a client. This lawyer has made sexual advances on me. He, well, he's mis misrepresenting my case. He told me if, if I wanted him to do a good job, I had to let him give me oral sex. And I honestly think that one of these days, Tony's going to slip up and not be able to cover his ass with all the gray zone operations. I mean, there's an insane amount of evidence of him manufacturing these drugs on a very large scale. And his Twitter handle is literally fucking enhanced athlete. So I find it radicalized that he's able to completely disconnect himself from any kind of liability for these companies. But as I mentioned in the last video, I talked about Tony in where there's a murder case at hand. The FBI is already having an open case and looking into this character, given that the, uh, the murder that we're talking about happened on his own damn property. And I think the reason that he's so fixed on all these Eastern Asian countries like Thailand and the Philippines is because he can get away with all of this stuff. He can buy out the law and protect himself from the United States. States. Because ultimately, if he stepped back in the United States for any prolonged period of time, his ass would get got. I mean, I know he comes to the Olympia every so often, but uh, maybe that's just something the FBI doesn't know about yet. I, I don't know. Maybe this is the year. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll see when I go there. Moral of the story is stay away from the freaks and the weirdos online. We've covered a lot of them here and I continue to do so as I plan to post every single day. And if you're interested in finding out who those creeps and weirdos are and you're into fitness even slightly, I recommend giving me a subscribe down below. It's free and it really does help my channel thrive. Another thing that you could do to even further support this channel would be to go to our Discord link down below and, and join our Discord. It is a paid group, but it helps us tremendously. It's a very low cost to you. And if nothing lasts, it just gets you closer to the community.